In this video, we won't be creating landscapes, but we'll take a look at how to use Gaia to make textures like the seamless and tileable rocky ground texture, which can be used in any 3D software for texturing large landscapes or environments. You can also use these textures in Unreal Engine to produce environments for games or cinematics. So we'll start off with a blank graph and I'll create a rock noise node. This will give us some rocky details. Since we are dealing with small details, I'm going to set the preview size to 1K resolution. The size of our rock noise I'll make a little bit smaller, but I'm going to want less density of rock, so I'm going to set that to 3 and octaves at 4. Now we'll take a look at what that gives us, and if we're not happy with it, we can adjust these settings here. But I think this is pretty good, but maybe I'll change the seed to another number and see how that looks and see what we get. So I'll change it to some random value, and that looks okay. Now from here, I'm going to want this pattern to tile seamlessly. So I'm going to add a seamless node. I'm going to go down here and drag a seamless node in, connect that up, and that will make this pattern more seamless. And we can preview that by clicking toggle here to see how it looks tiled. And you can see a little bit of tiling. And we can change that by changing the edge. How far out does it paint from the seams and kind of replace with some other pattern that's found in here? We can see at these areas here where it tiles, tiling one, two, three, four times. This edge is how big that gap is here, that it copies some other part of the pattern too to make it more seamless and it kind of feathers it in. So there's no real rules for this or perfect way of getting this to work. But generally when dealing with smaller details, I make a smaller edge size and then I just play with the, the shift values here and shift them around until I don't really see too much of a, a noticeable tiling spot. There's always going to be something, but I think this is not too bad. So that's not tiled and then tiled. I think I can live with that. So I'll leave that. So I'll preview this to not be tiling and then after the seamless node, I'm going to add one more node called a surface node, which is going to help add some additional details. So I'm going to drag this surface node in here, connect it up. And for the surface, I'm going to set it to be rough, which is what its default currently is. And then I'm going to push the strength up maybe a bit higher, but let's see what we can do with these other settings. We have coverage and then we have density. And if we play around with these and we preview this let's see what happens we put the strength higher see how it pulls out more details and to be honest i think the default setting here was pretty good this is what i had before after it adds a little bit more detail in here what happens if we change it to rocky then you have strength i think i'll stick with rough and maybe i'll put this up a little bit higher leave it at default as well it doesn't really matter but just helps pull some additional details out it makes where those rocks are a little bit more noticeable so sometimes i find that quite useful and i usually add it on now the next thing we're going to do is probably start changing our preview size to 2k resolution since again we are dealing with really small details so i'm going to let that generate and show us a preview so we're ending up with something like this, which already has quite a bit of detail and is looking pretty good. Now to properly color this surface or to give it some diffuse coloring value, we're going to need to extract certain details. So two things I'm going to use to extract details is a protrusion node. So I'm going to go over here and just give myself a little bit more room on this graph. And I'm going to add a protrusion node. I'm also going to add a texture node for so those two nodes. And I'm going to connect those up. So I'll connect up the protrusion, connect, connect up the texture, and put them here. And we'll view it what each one does. So protrusion node is going to give us some details. I'm going to press G and pin the surface as my shaping, and press F to pin protrusion as what color we're previewing on the surface. So protrusion is going to give us some nice brighter values for the peaks of these rocks or pebbles. And then texture is going to give us just some overall variation based on the 
height of the surface and slope and angle. So things like that. That's what texture is giving us. So we're going to use these two things to start coloring the surface to pull out some details to give it more break up some more variation as well. So on the protrusion node, I'm going to go back to that. You have your power or strength here. The default's probably fine, but you can always adjust it. And then for texture, we also have settings, which again, you can leave at default and see how that works. Um, or you can adjust it and play around with it a little bit. I think for what we have here is not bad. I just wish it was a little bit more brighter or more contrasty. So we might want to do some adjustments. And you can also change the scale if you're not getting enough breakup or variation. But in this case, I think this is working okay. One last thing I'm going to add that might be useful is a height node. So I'm going to go in here and get height from the data section there. And this height node will allow me to extract the peaks of those rocks or pebble pebbles that are coming really far out separate from the areas that are much lower. So if I preview the height, this is what we get. And we might want to change that to make it a bit more noticeable because this wouldn't work very good as a mask right now. So I'm going to set it to normalized. And I'm also going to set the, the minimum to zero, the maximum to maybe something like 25, maybe it's a bit too much, maybe 30 or 40. And then a really small fall off. And now we get a nice mask for all the larger pebbles that are going further out from the ground. So between these three things, we can start using those to make some more detailed kind of textures. And the very first thing I'm going to start doing to do that is not just jump into sat maps or coloring things right away by applying color maps to these grayscale values. I'm going to create more complex masks from what I already have here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my protrusion node and I'm going to take my height node and I'm going to add a invert and I'm going to invert the height and then use that as a mask in the protrusion node. And what that gives me, if I view the protrusion node now, it'll be a protrusion masked out by the height, so some of these areas will go away. So now I just get all the bigger pebbles with some nice grading and variation on them that could be used to apply different colors and patterns so they're not all just a flat color. They have a little bit of variation from the center of them to the edges of them. So that works really well. Now we have all the larger pebbles isolated. So already we have a mask that's much more useful than what we had before. So now we can start coloring it. But even before that, if I'm going to be using this as a tileable texture in Unreal or other softwares, I might want a normal map as well. So I'm going to go in here and from the side here, I'm going to scroll on down and create a normal map. I don't know if they actually, there it is, normal map. You can always search it, but I'm just dragging it from here so you could find it easily. And I'll connect the normal map to the surface. I'll preview that. That's how it looks. Okay. If you're going to be using this for certain game engines, you might have to flip the channel. I'm going to flip the Y, y channel so it works for the softwares I'm wanting to use it in. Um, so you might have to flip X or Y channel depending on the software you're going to be putting this normal map into, but that gives us our normal map already that we could export. And then we have to color the rocks. So this is where I'm going to start adding a sat map. So I'm going to go in here and take a sat map, which will apply a gradient to our grayscale values. Now I'll start off with the texture. We haven't done anything with the texture node here. So I'm going to connect that texture node to the sat map. I'll preview the sat map by pressing F on it. And there it is. There it is previewed with this current gradient being mapped to those grayscale values. Now you can play around in here and just try different things out. There's no real perfect method to this. But I'm going to go to Sandy. I'm going to start looking through these things and clicking on them and seeing what works. And maybe if I scroll through here, 
Anything that catches my eye, I might just click on and see how it looks. This one's not too bad. Maybe I can offset the, the bias a bit to give it something that looks a little bit better. So I can start upping this bias or changing it. Maybe I'll set it to 10. Not too bad. Maybe I'll uh, try input clarity. Doesn't make much of a difference. If you're wanting to adjust it slightly, usually this post processing stuff can also help. I can go in here to this post processing, apply brightness and contrast. You have to be a little bit careful with this because if you change these too far from their original values of the default of zero, you might get some really weird looking textures. But I'm going to try just playing around with this and that works pretty good. I'm getting a lot more contrast out of it now. That kind of feels like rock on some dusty, dry ground. So maybe maybe I'm happy with that. And then I can also apply some hue saturation lumens adjustments. So saturation, maybe it's too saturated now. I could make it 0.4 saturation and then it's not as saturated. Maybe it's too bright. So I can go in here and set my lumens to 0.5 or something or Maybe it's too dark, maybe 0.65. So we can use slight adjustments to get something that, that works for your texture. Now that we have something pretty good for this, we're going to finish up our sat map for our protrusion. So what I'm going to do is just take another sat map over here. And viewing that protrusion, this works really well, but it's not bright enough. I don't think here. I want to make this a little bit more contrasted or brighter. So in this case, what I might do is add a effects node. And if you haven't used these effects nodes, they're quite useful for just doing adjustments. I can connect protrusion to the effects node, preview the effects node. And on the effects node, I can do certain things like adjustments here, similar to the adjustments you find at the bottom on nodes, but doing it on an effects node, I don't forget that I've added it. And I could just add like a log scaling to this and that just makes it brighter. And I think that will work a little bit better when I put it into a sat map. So I'm going to do that and then I'll connect this effects node to the sat map. For the sat map, again, just try to find something that gives it nice breakup and variation. In this case, maybe I'll change my library to Sandy and just scroll through here and see what looks good. Just try a couple, see how they look. Look for something with a, a lot of contrast. This one's this one's not bad at all. Um, this one's looking pretty good. But you can really just kind of cruise through there and see what you'd want to choose. And maybe I'll go through here. Kind of want more gray values. But again, we can adjust it. Let's see if we take this. Similar to kind of what we have maybe I'll, I'll play around with clamping this the sat map so maybe i'll clamp it a little bit at the edge here maybe change the bias a bit uh let's see how this looks if i just click and preview maybe a bit more a bit more i don't know maybe negative 45 or something kind of nice i got some breakup and then again, if it's not exactly what we want, post-processing could be useful. Maybe it can reverse the, well, that, that works pretty good, reversing the sat map gradient. That's not bad at all. Maybe still on top of this, we'll try applying some brightness and contrast and just, just see what we can get. So saturation as well. I don't want it to be saturated because I'm going to blend this with that other one. Lumiance, maybe make it a little bit darker. And then see, play around with the brightness, contrast. Sure, let's add a bit more contrast in there. That's not bad. So now we have this sat map and this sat map. And what are we going to do with those two things? Well, we're going to combine them. So I'm going to go in here and add a combine node so i'll take a look and where is that combine node i might just that's going to go in add it in with the search 
There it is. And combine this sat map and that sat map. So both these sat maps I'm going to combine. And how we're going to combine them, let's just preview this for now. Right now it's set to blend by default. We're not going to want to blend it. Um, or if we do blend it, we're going to want some sort of mask. So I could use blend. I'll make it 100%. But I need to use something to mask out one of these patterns over the other. And what I'm going to use for that is probably our height here. So the peaks of the rocks, we'll use one of the sat maps. The lower areas like the dirt, we'll use the other. So I'll use the height node as our mask for the combine. And this is kind of my my end result here, which I think looks pretty good. Let's preview it on the actual surface here. D, F, not bad. Maybe I'll change my lighting a bit. Let's just see how it reacts with the shadowing. So not too bad. And this is 2K. When I put up to 4K, it'll look a little bit more detailed. Um, so let's let's take a look how it looks with 4K. Here's our 4K texture and that's looking pretty good. I don't have any complaints with that. I think that looks quite good. Maybe we can add a little bit more breakup or, or maybe reduce that surface. Maybe we don't even need that surface detail mode because it looks like everything's getting a little bit of an embossing or a kind of sharp edge. But hopefully this gives you an idea of how you can use Gaia to create some nice tileable textures they can use in any software to help produce environments. If you enjoyed this video or you learned something new, don't forget to press the like button and click on the subscribe button down below and check out in the description down below the link to the Patreon. If you are part of the Patreon, you'll get access to a PDF that goes over all the steps that we did in this video in a little bit more detail, as well as access to the Gaia file of the finished result.